Socrates described himself as an anti-athlete as much as anything for his heavy drinking and smoking. Tell that to Russia's defence as they follow his shoulders rather than his feet. Look how he found the angle. I welcome to this sphere day, which is all about uh, simple forex charting techniques for beginners. And while the techniques are very simple, they are very powerful and they will help you get better market timing, get the odds on your side. And I'm going to go through them in a minute, but I've started off the video with a short clip of uh, Brazilian soccer captain Socrates scoring an absolutely fantastic goal. The reason I've done this is because whenever I'm sort of talking about technical analysis and teaching it, I always actually say to people, think about Forex charting like a game of football. And when you're a chartist, think like a Brazilian footballer. Everyone lo loves watching Brazil. Why? Because they're so natural. They're so instinctive and they basically adapt to their opponent. They're not rigid at all. It's it's a very simple game, football, so is Forex, and don't be deceived by what yeah, a lot of experts will tell you. And the, the real key, in my view, is to keep your techniques nice and simple, but to vary them in relation to what you see on the chart. Now, when I say that, I mean, what I'm really saying kind of anti is all these rigid systems that are found, you know, some really high probability one setup. Uh, it doesn't exist. You know, all setups are unique. You play a game of football twice, um, people move differently. OK, they might use simple skills in the way they move, but they move differently. Forex charts are the same. No two setups are the same. The past only repeats itself to a certain degree. Now let's move on to some simple trading techniques. Um, first, we're going to go through trend lines, then we're going to go through oscillators, and we're going to go through yeah, timing the market. Um, but first of all, let's just go through basic trend lines and how to use them correctly. Now, welcome back after that uh, short quote there from Ed Scott on what we're all trying to do when we analyse our charts. Now, before you draw your trend lines, you've got to decide should you display uh, the price action in candlestick form or in bar chart form. And my own view is to use bar charts. It gives you a far cleaner chart. And also, while I've got nothing against candlesticks, so yeah, what I do find with traders is they get immersed into the idea that there are some reliable formations of various combinations of candles. Uh, I don't think there are, and I've done a lot of research on it. I favour straight bar chart. Now, in terms of support and resistance, you can either have diagonal lines or you can have straight lines. However, what you need to be aware of with both types of line is it's the more tests, the better normally, and the more valid that level of resistance or support is. Now, in terms of uh, yeah, the two different types of trend line, straight lines have an advantage in my view because they actually equate to one price level. Okay, And if you look at diagonal line, of course, it doesn't. Now, you can use either. I mean, I use both, but on the diagonal lines, you've got to be careful. When I say be careful, you know, you've got to be careful of the number of tests and how far they are apart. In terms of any trend line. I always think you should have at least four tests to make it a decent level and the more the better as we've just said. But on a diagonal line, do not have let's say three or four tests that are very widely spaced apart. And I've seen traders do this. They'll draw a line, let's say it's the British pound over uh, a couple of months. They'll draw a, a line under the 165 level and a month before that it might be 163 and a month before that 161. And you've got too wide a price spread, in my view. I mean, I just don't see how that sort of diagonal line can be valid. So if you're using diagonal lines, I think you want a lot of tests in the near term. OK, OK, by all means, draw back through tests going further back. But you need a lot of tests in the near term. And diagonal lines tend to be best when they line up with a moving average. And I'll return to that later. Um, in terms of, you know, price levels on the chart, what you always need to watch out for is the round number. Round numbers suck, in, as they say in the trade, and they do, you know, prices gravitate towards them. And you then very often get a lot of noise around the round number. So let's say you've drawn a level of support at, let's say, 165 on the British pound. Don't, if you're thinking that support is going to break, just sell it through 165 at like 164.90 because 
you're in the spread okay that's where the noise is wait for it to come out the spread I, i'll normally use 20 pips minimum and if it's um you know a less traded currency can be 30 pips yeah you've got to get away from that spread a lot of traders come in and trade the spread uh and it's a good way to basically get chopped now in terms of you know the time span on the charts you know i always recommend daily chart levels are the ones to watch but what you should do is add another layer in as well which is the weekly chart you get those weekly levels to line up with those daily levels makes that line much more valid on the chart and i think you know a lot of traders you know just trade in too short a time frame so they look for support and resistance in an hour or two it's noise forget it go for the big levels daily chart the weekly chart backs it up even better now in terms of you know when you're drawing the charts you should basically just draw your trend lines very very quickly as you see them it shouldn't take you very long at all i tend to find most of the time i end up with triangles on my chart and people ask me do i pay attention to head and shoulders tops and bottoms and all this sort of stuff no i don't i don't really care what the chart formation is called or labeled i just want levels of support and resistance and then i want a target line that's all i want to draw on the chart now in terms of you know, trading with price action you, know, you get a lot of people say it's the only way to trade my own view is that with price action trading it has its limitations and it's a bit like looking at a car okay and thinking the car looks very nice before you buy it but not looking at the engine and its health the internals and i think you know you need to really think about using some indicators and oscillators and so forth and yeah it doesn't need to complicate the chart at all it could be very very simple the way you use you know uh, indicators and that's what i want to go through next just you know getting a deeper insight into the chart so let's move on to looking at trading indicators <clears throat> I will come back after that uh, short quote there from Mark Weinstein. I think that sums up one of my favourite ways of trading. I've always got my eye on momentum and if it's diverging from price. Uh, the logic behind momentum indicators is simple. If price action is rising and then momentum suddenly turns in the opposite direction to the downside, then you've got the potential for a reversal. Now, there's many popular uh, yeah, uh, momentum indicators. Four most popular would probably be the ADX, the RSI, the Stochastic, and the MACD. And a lot of traders, you know, say to me, well, they don't work all the time. You know, they chop on all this sort of thing, give false signals. Well, yeah, trend lines don't work all the time. It's the way you use the indicator in relation to the chart. And also, if you practice with indicators, you can use them slightly differently to the way perhaps that they've been taught to be used you know the sort of uniform view I'll give you an example stochastic yeah the classic way is to take a turn down from overbought through 80 well i don't think you just need to use it that way you can use it in various ways i like to see it get above 90 or 95 even then just trade any divergence at all if my chart formation backs that up uh, another great um, way of spotting a turning point is with the adx just only use it one way when it goes above 40 and turns down look to your chart and look for a turning point mm -hmm. I think momentum indicators are very useful in terms of indicating how overbought and oversold a market is they can also keep you out of trade so for example if there looks to be a breakout coming on the chart and you look at momentum it's an overbought extreme then you perhaps want to be weary of that breakout because it might not have enough momentum behind it push the price beyond the breakout point uh, one indicator i think that all traders should consider is uh, the bollinger band now bollinger band basically measures volatility now in terms of volatility you can actually substitute another word in for volatility and that's emotion okay uh, big volatility spikes on a chart are caused by emotion so when you see a dramatic increase in volatility uh, you can basically trade you know with that volatility but be very weary if you know the price gets outside of the Bollinger Bands because you know it's probably overextended what I also like about the Bollinger Band is it's got a mid band it's a 20 day moving average so when you get you know right out of those outer bands you can look 
for a return to the mid band, the 20 day moving average. Always keep in mind, yeah, moving averages smooth out those short term fluctuations in price, and prices will normally come back to a mean price. And, you know, it's a simple moving average, the 20 day, but I find it heavily effective, you know, in terms of when it lines up with a trend line. It very often provides support in an uptrend and resistance in a downtrend. So I'd recommend anyone use a Bollinger Band or a standard deviation indicator. You must understand standard deviation of price and volatility if you want to trade Forex markets. Also, if you see low volatility on a chart, yeah, don't trade it. You know, wait for low volatility to change to high. Traders make the classic mistake of trying to trade when volatility is low. You never ever make money. And I think you know, momentum indicators, uh, you know, a, a volatility indicator, you know, are essential uh, indicators you know, for my trading strategy. And I really find they help filter trades and give warnings of turning points. I also just want to discuss very quickly moving averages. Just set a 20 day moving average I find very effective. Um, but there's plenty of others, like a 40 day moving average and a 200 day moving average. Just a simple moving average. And I think you know, it, they may be simple, but they're just so highly effective in terms of you know, finding support or resistance in the market. So you know, in terms of indicators, there is absolutely no reason not to use them at all because I do think they just give you a deeper insight into the price action. You know, you know, they've all got limitations, they've all got uh, you know, flaws, so to speak, but you actually have to learn to use them you know, and, and practice with them to get full advantage from using trading indicators. But if you do, I think it, it's a much better way of trading than just with pure price action, just get a deeper insight into the chart. And I just want to quickly conclude with a few points and uh, one final quote. I welcome back up that short quote from Jesse Livermore, and I think that's very applicable to Forex technical analysis. Um, you do not want to be trading too frequently from your charts. You really need to focus on the high odds, you know, opportunities uh, and don't, don't try and trade every twist and turn of the market that's what beginners do you know you should avoid this at all costs big levels and best chart setups that mm. as you view them and in this video i actually haven't given you a set strategy i've just given you the components and i think it's very important that you just learn the strategy and learn the techniques and how to use them yourself. I mean, you probably might not do it in the same way as me. Uh, you know, my uh, tips here are just really pointers of what works for me. It might work slightly differently for you. Forex charting is an art. Always keep in mind you know, that you are against opponents on the other side and you don't want to be doing what they do, i.e. scalping in, in the spread, for example, around a round number or buying a breakout when momentum is overbought. You need to have an edge in Forex trading. And, you know, anyone can learn technical analysis, put a little simple strategy together, which has an edge. But always keep in mind, it is an art, not a science. Now, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm just actually going to finish off uh, with a clip of uh, Socrates. He's now sadly departed. He summed up what football was in this clip coming up. And he was actually a great man as well. And I'm just going to play out with a little clip on him into our credits. So thank you very much for watching me. Take care. Have a good day. From his beard to his penalties, this in the 1986 World Cup. The key word was cool. Football, he insisted, was an art. But it was also a powerful political tool. At his Brazilian club, Corinthians, he led a movement to give everyone in the club an equal vote. At a time of military dictatorship in the country, it was a brave and potent move. Once retired from the game, he practiced medicine and explored the arts, directing a play, writing a novel. There was also a bizarre 12-minute interlude, aged 50, as a substitute for non-league Garforth in West Yorkshire. In the end, his alcohol fueled lifestyle caught up with him. He was hospitalised several times this year. Footballer, intellectual, doctor and democrat. 
even in football's gaudy world, his was a talent and a presence which shone out. 